Hello everyone. Um, this is a likeness likeness project that um, I have uh, accepted, and I this is a model for Liam Neeson. And so in this project, I actually modeled the face and the hair and everything. This is uh, everything from scratch from myself. But I, um, I had some challenges. As you can see, it's um, there is uh, some characteristic for uh, Liam that it's a, his wrinkles, wrinkle on the face, and I re I actually concluded that if I use uh, geometry uh, for wrinkles, it would be more realistic than normal map, and then I said well why should i should i use normal map anyway because this is a cinematic project and actually um right now with unreal and maya with the hard the new hardware we won't have any problem using higher geometry like this and i, I will show you the geometry density actually i could use this density of geometry for all over the um face but i decided to just emphasize the geometry density on these particular areas and <coughs> something and actually i used um, a method that actually by the former um the wrinkles uh, actually uh, do not lose their volumes when they are <coughs> the surface is shrinking and actually they they um, uh, the wrinkles are emphasized and I will show you the effect of this and this is not something that I did intentionally on the blend shape but it is kind of automatic as you can see the wrinkles are kind of bulging and it is more prominent here if i show on the eyebrow you can see the wrinkle are not losing their value it's kind of natural and the interesting part of this is that it is not something that i uh did intentionally but it's kind of automatic but the point is if i need to intentionally um, sorry for uh, noises because I'm living in the Philippines and this country is everybody um, interested in singing and the the point here is even if I need to uh, emphasize the wrinkles I can do it on blend shape so i don't need the dynamic normal map anyway for example as you can see it's it, it does a pretty good job on emphasizing wrinkle anyway if i want to emphasize it more i can show you how and opening shape editor actually the system that works it's a source um shape that is actually the actual geom the actual metahuman that's my metahuman which is here is connected to the source and i can actually emphasize the uh skull the um, wrinkles so i'm not going to do um a full sculpting but i'm just going to show you how it may work or maybe I can use just as an example okay I need to reduce the strength very loud probably one just an example I'm not going to it, it takes a lot of time to scope and actually Maya is not a this choice for sculpting anyway just let's say we need that kind of wrinkle and I'm going to remove it from edit mode
as you can see, we have a wrinkle on blend shape. So we can have wrinkle on blend shape. And for the other project, actually, you, you see that this is obviously it's not a metahuman topology because it's denser than metahuman topology. And I was thinking that actually I can use a very specific topology for emphasizing on wrinkle. And I'm going to do that in the other projects. And let's show, let's see how it looks in Unreal. So here we have the character in Unreal. And take a look at the overall character. And everything is working as expected. So it's a metahuman and we have metahuman control rig. And for the phase through, we have a control rig for the face. So everything looks okay, but there are some problem that I will talk about the problem. Um, so I uh, actually um, this character looks good and it looks Liam Nason but I put animation on it and I realized the animation look awful and I will show you so let me bring the um, Liam and here's the animation take a look at the animation that I used here it is and I used low quality on other characters I have eight levels of detail and have been tested on a wide range of hardware platforms, from feature film to mobile. If you're interested in learning about my animation rig or high fidelity deformations, built on control rig, the new strand based hair system via the groom component, or how everything is tied together and animated in sequencer, then have a look under the hood in this project. This is just a glimpse of things to come. So the problem is, uh, it doesn't look like the character that we're looking for at all. It's um, very bad. The problem is the deformation for a metahuman is kind of generic. You have no control over the deformation. Yeah, you, you have control. Uh, of course, you can change the blend shape if you want to one by one. But it is 600 blend shapes. And how can you do that? It's like takes forever so um, I am working on a, um, on a method to change blend shape as a batch like for example let's say Liam has a specific type of smiling yeah, definitely it's not the one that I'm looking for and I want to uh, apply this smile for all the for all these controllers like this this and this to apply that touch to the smile or specifically for the eyebrow maybe a character has a specific type of um, frowning or a surprising expression and which is different than the normal metahuman so in order to apply these we need to have a method you, know, you need to have a system to apply the, the the special expression to to a bond to to the older blend shapes not one by one because it's kind of very tedious very calm very kind of impossible because this is not just one blend shape. You have this, and you have the combination of these two, and you have the combination of these three, and then you have the combination of these, the right one. So it's kind of um, to the point 
that it's impossible that you can apply the expression one by one because too, too many blend shapes. So I'm looking for a method to apply blend shape or specific touches to the face, but in a batch mode. And um, I will update you in upcoming videos to show you my my uh, advanced uh, development on this uh, particular issue and I need to um, rem uh, rem remind you why you should subscribe to my channel and this channel actually I'm going to find ways and methods to improve character developments specifically for metahuman because I'm just only wor I'm just working on metahuman because I believe that metahuman is a um, is a revolutionary um, uh, advance and the reason that you um, I'm emphasizing on metahuman is that everybody can be uh, accustomed to metahuman they can use metahuman in unreal and unreal is such an amazing um, game engine that offers this technology to everybody for free and the point that unreal is actually can be used for cinematic is like mind-blowing because you have groom component in unreal you don't have this thing in other um engines and it's such it is very good it is like x gen in maya and you have lumen in unreal you have nanite in unreal nanite is just the thing that revolutionize cinematic because one problem cinematic projects because one problem we have when we are dealing with these kind of project we want details we want every time everything to be as realistic as possible but you have also you have also to you have also have to optimize things um, even if it's not for game even it's like inside maya you have to optimize it other otherwise maya can't handle it it will keep crashing and you can't even navigate in the scene and you have to like um, having proxy for everything and in render time well sometimes if you have big big uh, scene uh, even you can't render them because even render engines has trouble with high geometries they are not able to render um, the scene for example you have a scene that a lot of trees with a lot of trees you have a jungle and you want to render them and you realize oh even I have like 64 uh, gigabytes of memory, it's, it's, it's not possible to render that. I need more memory. It takes forever to render to uh, this particular scene. And it's very hard to manage this kind of scenes. And Nanite is solving this problem. And another problem that Unreal is solving is Fidelity. You are, you are actually imagine that you are making a cinematic um, uh, video and you want to have a preview other game other render engines gives give you a preview they have real-time engine like Re redshift and v-ray but um, actually they are not very real time they are like okay faster than final but it still sucks. It is still you have to wait. You have to wait forever until it triggers and it crashes all the time. And how cool it is if you can see a real, like ninety percent to final per uh, final render at real time, and you can do lighting easily with Lumen. And when you are ready to uh, render the final image, you can use ray path tracing. This is just mind blowing. This is just revolutionizing the way that we use, uh, we render 
for cinematic projects. And also regarding the X Gen, I actually make the hair in X Gen and it keeps crashing and I lost the project a million of time and it really makes me mad. I am not I I'm I'm thinking that maybe X Gen Interactive is more stable, but it is kind of limited. And I'm working on something to to overcome these limitations for Xgen Interactive in the upcoming video I'm going to talk about them too. So stay tuned for this project to show you how I can actually customize the shapes to make it more like the character that we are looking for and also showing you some cool method for Xgen Interactive. Thank you for watching.